Hi, my name is Mark, and this is the love of my life, Aja. After retiring from the Army in 2018, my family and I moved from the States to my wife's hometown of Szczecin, Poland. She followed me around for 18 years, so now it's only fair that I do the same for her. She runs a Polish cooking food channel and blog, and I lift the heavy things. Once in a while, she shuts down the kitchen, and we explore Poland together to find as much good food as we can. Welcome to Kitchens Closed. Hello, my hungry friends. It's Friday, and Kitchens Closed. Today on Kitchens Closed, we continue our travels around Poland, and we are in... Torun. In Torun. Day one. Day one. This is going to be a multi-day. So, day one. So you want to go see Torun? Okay, come on, let's go, let's go. We're starting our tour of Torun on the southern bank of the Vistula River at our campsite. As you can see, the Vistula River is to our north and we'll be crossing over on the bridge that you see to the west. Torun is a historical city on the Vistula River in north central Poland and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. With a population of 200,000 people, its population can swell to well over millions during the summertime. Torun is one of the oldest cities in Poland, with the first settlement dating back to the 8th century and later having been expanded in 1233 by the Teutonic Knights. Over the centuries, it was home for people of diverse backgrounds and religions. From 1264 until 1411, Torun was part of the Hanseatic League, and by the 17th century, it was one of the elite trading points which greatly affected the city's architecture ranging from brick gothic to mannerism and baroque. In the early modern age, Torun was a royal city of Poland and was one of the largest four cities in the country at the time. With the partitions of Poland in the late 18th century, it became part of Prussia, followed by the German Empire and the Second Polish Republic. During World War II, Torun was spared from bombing and destruction. Its old town and iconic central marketplace have been entirely preserved. Our first stop of the day, however, has got to be breakfast. So we're off to the old town to Buka. This is beautiful. Go give me sugar, sugar. What did you order, sugar? Um, ordered scrambled eggs with bacon and freshly baked bread. Yeah. And orange ginger apple, freshly squeezed juice. Wonderful. This is our breakfast joint in Torun that we recommend. I, however, found something that I never find in Poland. I found a Reuben. So I'm having a Reuben for breakfast, and I don't care. <laughs> well, we'll show you some of the food later on. Okay, goodbye. So here I have a Reuben. Now, I, I wouldn't say it's our traditional Reuben you'd see, but it looks glorious. This brisket is done very well. And we think we have a mm, nice mayonnaise. Thank you. Some kraut and some French mustard. Are you excited? I'm excited, very excited. What'd you get? My turn. Scrammies with bacon. A little salad, fresh bread. Let's see them starving. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put that in my mouth. No, the math doesn't work out right. So, I'm gonna have to do the deconstructive method. Now that our bellies are full, we're gonna ride our bicycles around the city and show you a little bit. Now this video is not gonna be as organized as normal, so bear with us, have fun. We weren't even planning on filming today, so we didn't have our microphones with us, so the audio is not the best in the world. But before we go any further, check this out. So we are in Old Town Torun, or Torun, as you would say, and not the one with the shroud, different Torun. So, 
This is a medieval city, and like all the medieval cities that are super cool, they have these big brick walls that go around it. Now we're gonna take you around and show you some of these walls. And there's a wonderful noise in the background of construction, because our audio has always gotta be super. So we're gonna show you some of these things. There's a leaning tower. I'm not gonna stop at every little thing because there's so much history here that I don't know. Go watch Rick Steves. He'll tell you more. Ooh, if you don't know about Rick Steves and you like traveling in Europe or want or are interested in travel, check out Rick Steves. He's on YouTube. He's on PBS. He's awesome. Not paid sponsor. And we're going to be getting around the city on our bicycles. This one's mine. Yes, it's a girl's bicycle because boys' bicycles are stupid because they have this bar that is designed to smash your jumbly bits into a billion pieces. I like my meat and tube edge, so I get a girl's bike. Plus it's easy on, easy off, and I am secure in my manhood. My bicycle's name is Princess, because that's how she makes me feel. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this is a horrible idea. I'm going to crash and die. over there across the river is a campsite our uh, Ruthie is parked out there yeah we cross that bridge on our bicycles and we are in the city now yay bicycles Okay, princess, you take a rest now. Introduce us to oh, your bicycle. This is my bike. It is as old as our child. So it's almost 16 years old. It's been with me this whole time through thick and thin. When Mark was gone, Thor was with me the whole time. Thor? Ah, yeah. Bicycle Thor. Thor the meat hammer. <laughs> <laughs> So we're standing in front of Bridge Gate. Bridge Gate was uh, builtified, this one, in 1432. Now, what you can find interesting about this gate is stop right there where you is, is these lovely rounded corners. You see how they're rounded. The reason for that is in the 14 to 1500s, things became different warfare. We got these things called cannon and rifle or muskets and things like that. And so the rounded corners would help a cannonball glance off. If this was a squared off wall, it would hit directly on and damage things. But does it really work like that? It does until rifled cannon came in. Once rifled cannon came in around the time of the American Civil War, this stuff didn't matter no more. We we're punching straight through it. So smooth bore cannon, this helps rifled cannon, not so much. Now, if you're under siege and you still got to get stuff in, or you're just not willing to open stuff up, how do you get stuff inside your ramparts? Well, if you walk this way, you will see the medieval crane system. We had a bunch of dudes up in there, and they had a winchy wheely thing, and they would lower down the hook, pick up your stuff, and put it up inside where you can distribute it to the city folk or whatever the hell it is you're doing. There's another version of this, a big one, called the elephant in Gdańsk, and someday we'll show you that one. That one was done by dudes walking in a big treadmill going up and down. That's pretty cool. So there you go. Medievally stuffed Torun. Next.
that thing is a prison. A real for realsies prison? A real for realsies prison. You can see oh, a yeah, guard up there and everything. Stop it! <laughs> Behind me is the Leaning Tower of Peace. No, Leaning Tower of Toru. It was constructed in the 13th century as a defensive tower to help defend the wall against evil people outside. Was it built crooked? It was not at the beginning. It was built on some crap foundations and um, moist ground and started to kind of lean a little bit over the tires. Are we safe? Yeah, mostly, probably, I guess so. But then, in the 17th century, it was stopped used as a, as a defensive fortification. In the 19th century, it was used as a woman's prison. What? For all those naughty women folk out there who don't like to follow the rules. Like the witches? Yeah, the witches. Now there's a cool, now, and then it held a blacksmith shop uh, for a gunsmithery, uh, also at the same time. Nowadays, uh, it's a gift shop, and it's closed, apparently. I don't want no gifts anyway. Okay, so this city and a lot of the fortifications were built by the Teutonic Knights. Now, there's a thing that, there's a, a legend that there was 12 Teutonic Knights that lived inside of this here leaning tower of Toru. When? In the 12th century, I don't know, I see here, that would have been 14th, 13th, 14th century. 13th. A couple hundred years, dear, that, that's not the point. The point is that 12 Teutonic Knights were living in there. Now, Teutonic Knights were a religious order of knights, and they were monks, meaning they were forbidden to have the hokey pokey. But one of the monks fell in love with this lady, and they were found out. When they were found out, they were punished. She was sentenced to 25 lashes, and he was sentenced to building a tower. But the tower had to lean like his morals were not straight. <laughs> and so they had to make him do that. And they say, that a sinful person cannot keep his balance to this day underneath the tower. For how long? I don't know. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the leaning tower of Toru. Well, hey there, beautiful. I think we have mentioned this before to our viewers that the best time to visit Poland is May and June. Mm -hmm. Tada! Tada! You see some groups of kids, school groups, school kids, school children, and young adults visiting the city, but this in July and August will be packed. And much hotter and ridiculously stupid. Make no. Yep, yep, yep. After riding around all day long, it was time for some more food. So we headed further north, out of Old Town, into what used to be a manufacturing area that has now been converted into shops and restaurants. We're on our way to Loft 79. How's it going? There's sardines in that. That's for shizzle, sure. Good thing you didn't order that. <laughs> <laughs> I have here a swatko, swatka zburakiam. So that means I have a salad with roasted beets and some chopped almonds toasted and some blue cheese. Arugula, also called racket in England. Oh, I dropped my nugget. And it's super tasty. What'd you have, my love? I have uh, Caesar salad. 
I wonder if a lot of people know that Caesar salad has fish in it. What's the fish? Sardines. Yeah, or, sardines in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the dressing. Not sardines, but um, that other really tiny fish that's really smelly. Sardines. No. Sm herring. Uh, 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 it's French. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sardine. <laughs> I don't know, because uh, we didn't know that in real... It's our our schwa. Yes, our schwa. Anchovies. Anchovies. There's anchovies in Caesar dressing. I didn't know that in real Caesar dressing, and I don't like it. <laughs> I, like the, I like the Hidden Valley Caesar. <laughs> it's more gooder. Okay, we're gonna eat now. How's your chicken? Really nice and soft. Nice and tender. <laughs> it's not that strong. A little mojito action. We opted for bicycling because we had a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. As you noticed. <laughs> yeah. Lucy stayed at the camper with Ruti. Yeah. But don't worry. It was only like 72 degrees in here. There's nothing, no danger for Lucy. We checked. We checked. So we got across the river on our bicycles and we rode around all of the old town. We had wonderful breakfast and um, some lunch. Some salads. Some salads. And we feel very accomplished. Even yeah. though we didn't do that much. We didn't do that much. Tomorrow next week. But wait. Whoa, there's more. What do you pay attention to when you get to a new city that you don't know? What do you go for? I go for the historical major sites and or museums. That's my preference. I like the history of things. Uh, and then second, and but a very, very close second, is food. I try to find whatever the, the food of that region is. Yeah. Here in Torun, uh, Torun is famous for gingerbread cookies. As you saw in this video. We will... I'm looking forward to finding the shops all over the place. Um, so we'll stop at one tomorrow. And next week. Today, tomorrow, next week. Today was a scan. We did a scan. Yeah, an overview, if you overview. will. And tomorrow, I want tomorrow next week. I want to do. I want to go stop at a gingerbread uh, store. I uh, yeah, and I want to stop at a Teutonic Night Castle. Do they have one of those here? I don't know. It's left of it anyway. Okay. <laughs> Teutonic night or was it... What were the ones in Malbork? Those were... Shratz, cross The cross knights. Yeah, but there's Teutonic and there's Templar knights. Uh, I think built this castle and the uh, Teutonic knights built Malbork. Okay. I could be wrong. You'll find out next week tomorrow. Tomorrow, next week. Episode 2 of Torun. <laughs> <laughs> We've not had, had anything to drink No, yet. we've been out in the sun all day. So it's like, it's like I'm a cheap date after, after being out in the sun all day. <laughs> but I really hope you enjoyed this episode and meeting uh, Thor and Princess. And Thor Hammer. Thor Hammer Princess. And we'll see what happens next time. Next week, tomorrow. 
please follow, like, and subscribe. Jump onto Instagram and follow us. There's bugs. And there's a new, brand new, a little while ago, <laughs> Meet Hammer Thorn t-shirt. There is. So if you go to the merch store, we have a new custom design. And, where, and where is the merch store? On www.polishyourkitchen.com. At the top of the page, on the upper right-hand corner, there's a merch store link thingy. And you can get your Kitchen Hammer, Thor, Hammer, Meat Hammer t-shirts, hoodies, and delightfulnesses. And also a brand new one. And Oh, and a brand new logo for PYK. Which I, I should have been wearing tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Well, Hello, my week. hungry friends, it says. Yeah. Hello, my I'm hungry friends. I'm excited about that one. I am too. So, goodbye, my hungry friends. We'll see you next week tomorrow. Bye. Bye. No, you say Dovidenia. Dovidenia. Bye.